2157. A voiceover narrates, Earth has forgotten about wars and famine. Nature has revived. Medicine has conquered deadly diseases. Humanity is exploring unknown planets and trusting the search for extraterrestrial life in deep space to students full of strength, courage, and a belief in goodness. A young man named Max embarks on another flight. Suddenly his spacecraft is damaged by an asteroid and makes an emergency landing on an unknown planet. Max steps outside and immediately his shuttle explodes, leaving him without communication. But he doesn't despair and first of all decides to explore. By all parameters, the planet resembles Earth, and the astronaut hopes to find help and maybe a communication system here, but an indigenous inhabitant captures him in the forest. To understand the language of this planet, Max inserts a translator capsule into his ear. The indigenous person, named Zeph, turns Max over to the authorities. They put a helmet on Max that can project a person's thoughts and memories onto a screen and begin the interrogation. At the same time, in a nearby room, Corporal Gaius is assigned to transport Max to the capital as a subconvoy. Here, Max senses a strange signal, and everyone around starts chanting the anthem of the guard. Later, they pass by a strange tower, which, according to Gaius, serves to protect against enemies. Suddenly, its base explodes, and the structure collapses onto the road. Gaius is trapped inside the car, but Max pulls the corporal out. It turns out that this act was carried out by the rebels, the main enemies of the supreme authority of the state. The two men reach the capital on foot. Meanwhile, the head of the Department of Special Research, known as the Wanderer, summons his subordinate named Fank and instructs him to deliver Max to the department. Fank takes Max away, while the Republic's prosecutor reports that the Wanderer has taken in a strange savage and instructs gathering all available information about it. Then it's time to activate the towers, and everyone prepares in their own way. The prosecutor enters the bathroom and clamps a special stick between his teeth. Meanwhile, Funk has a seizure, and while soldiers assist him, Max manages to escape from the vehicle. The shocked young man walks through the city, marveling at the unfamiliar and incomprehensible life. Meanwhile, the unknown fathers gather for a meeting, as they call, the rulers of this planet. After a long walk, Max enters a local cafe where he stands up for a waitress who was insulted by one of the patrons. The grateful girl introduces herself as Rada. It turns out that she is the sister of Corporal Gaius. While escorting her home, Max gets into a brawl with a street gang and defeats them. Impressed, Rada takes him to her place. Later, Gaius returns home. Max starts asking questions about the workings of their world and quickly realizes that Rada and Gaius's minds are poisoned by propaganda and false information. Rada is convinced that their planet is hollow, and there is no such thing as the sky or space. Meanwhile, Gaius educates his new friend about the political structure of their state, known as Saraksh. The Unknown Fathers are the saviors of the homeland who have stopped wars with the help of defense towers that protect the country from attacks. Nobody knows the Unknown Fathers' true identities because they are not rulers, but public servants. At Max's request, Corporal recommends him for the guard. Max demonstrates a high level of training, which surprises Gaius. The two men often argue about politics, and one day Gaius admits that neighboring states hate Saraksh because they were once a single state united by a common history. Gradually, romantic feelings develop between Max and Rada. They go for walks often and Max tells her about his home planet, Earth, and regrets that his parents believe he is dead. Soon, Max is tasked with catching rebels, whom they identify by their regular seizures reminiscent of epileptic fits. One of the rebels attacks the captain, and Max saves his life, after which the captain suddenly regrets catching them, as they are also human beings. Max reveals that he considered them something like savages. Later, Max attends interrogations and sees that the rebels are not terrorists, as the unknown fathers label them, but ordinary people with their ideals and beliefs. Max cannot come to terms with the cruelty of the interrogations and simply cannot believe that someone is paying the rebels to hate the government. Meanwhile, Fank reports to the Wanderer that he has found the savage, while Gaius and Max are summoned to the captain of the guard, who orders Max to execute the arrested rebels. Max leads the condemned to the execution site in the forest, but soon he returns to the commanding officer, drops his gear and weapons, as he has released the arrested rebels and walks away. Max begins to speak about the real and just order of the world that exists on Earth. 
In response, the captain shoots Max, and Gaius is ordered to write a report about the transfer. Meanwhile, the unknown fathers are discussing an attack on neighboring states. The prosecutor advocates for starting a war, and the chief father orders them to come up with a pretext, such as an attack on a tower. During this time, Max's body is recovered by the rebels. Among them is a doctor who is astonished because, according to all the rules, Max should have died. He reveals that the unknown fathers are a group of conspirators who have seized power and eliminated dissenters, thus diverting the population's attention from poverty and corruption. The towers are transmitters of special radiation that hypnotizes the impoverished people, although most of them do not notice it. The minority, which includes the rebels, experiences excruciating pain. The transmitters are activated twice a day across the country, causing people to go insane and die. Max is recognized as one of their own and taken for an operation to sabotage the tower, organized by the prosecutor through a traitor. Amid gunfire, Max makes his way to the transmitter and detonates it. However, the rebel squad perishes. Max seeks refuge in Rada's apartment where he reveals everything he has learned about the towers. Gaius does not believe this and suggests that Max should return to his home and take Rada with him. But at that moment the guards storm the apartment and arrest the men. Max is incarcerated in a prison where he is recognized by the indigenous Zeph, who is also a rebel. Max tells Zeph about the tower's destruction and the loss of the rebel squad. Meanwhile, the wanderer asks the prosecutor to hand over Max to him. The prosecutor, however, requests in return to halt the development of more precise transmitters, as he fears that his secret will be revealed since his reaction to the radiation is similar to that of the rebels, meaning he is also a dissenter. Later, Max and other death row inmates are sent to clear the southern borders of the remaining war robots. During this time, the prosecutor learns that Max is immune to the emitters. He decides to break the agreement with the wanderer and orders Max to be brought to him. The next day, Max attempts to convey to the rebels the idea that they should not destroy the towers one by one but strike at the center, where the signal originates. Zeph becomes furious and explains that the towers are not for identifying dissenters. They are active continuously, not just twice a day. The radiation from the towers robs people of their ability to think critically. However, it makes them believe everything that newspapers, radio, teachers and preachers say. People can be made to believe anything. Only the rebels understand this, as the radiation does not hypnotize them, but only inflicts agonizing pain. Zeph continues, there are mutants in the South who are also unaffected by the radiation. However, they have no dealings with humans. Just then, they hear the roar of an engine, and Zeph identifies it as a self-propelled tank, trying to kill them. Max sprints to the tank, climbs inside, and disables the automatic control system. He then informs his friends that he is heading south to find allies and destroy the towers. At the border, the military attempts to stop the tank, and among them, Max recognizes Gaius. Taking him captive, Max breaks through the barricades. On the way, Max tells Gaius about the true situation on this planet, and Gaius becomes convinced of his accuracy when, at the designated time, he is outside the tower's range and does not feel the radiation. Gaius gets angry upon realizing that he has been a puppet of the government all this time, but Max tries to calm him down and reminds him that there are 40 million people like him, and it is for them that he initiated this rebellion. During a stop, residents of the steps, referred to as mutants, appear near the tank. They behave peacefully and offer food to the travelers. The guys proceed to the ruler of these lands, noting the poverty and destitution of the population. They are told that it is dangerous to live here after the last war, but these people are alchemists with nowhere else to go. Max suggests to their leader, the Duke, to start a rebellion against the Unknown Fathers, but the mutants are physically and morally too weak to help in the uprising. The mutants propose that the guys seek help from the island empire. However, to do that, they must pass through contaminated lands. So the Duke gifts them an old bomber and the guys take to the sky. During the flight, the bomber is exposed to the radiation from the towers, and Gaius becomes fanatically devoted to Max, obstructing him from piloting. Max struggles to maintain control, and the bomber collides with a tower. Gaius suddenly snaps out of his fanatic state with no recollection of what he had just done. However, their aircraft is shot down by the automated anti-aircraft defense system left over from the previous war. The downed bomber crashes into the sea, but Max and Gaius manage to escape and reach the shore. 
On the shore they discover an abandoned submarine, and Max decides to go inside. At the same time, in the city, the prosecutor orders Rada to be brought to him and his men snatch her off the street. He claims to be Max's friend and shows Rada a recording of his escape, however she doesn't believe him and refuses to assist the prosecutor in his search for her beloved. Rada is thrown into prison. Meanwhile, Gaius, impatiently waiting for his friend, swims to the submarine where they discover evidence of horrifying experiments conducted on prisoners. The guys reach the control room and view video recordings of mass executions of Gaius's fellow countrymen by the representatives of the island empire, whom they were seeking help from. Gaius is horrified by the fact that these monsters could invade his country. It becomes evident that forming an alliance with the empire is not an option. The guys return to the shore, where they are met by a coastal patrol. It turns out that a war has broken out with a neighboring state, and like most of the prisoners, they will be sent to the front. Meanwhile, the Wanderer, desiring to lure Max into his department, engineers Rada's escape. He laments how the war has disrupted all his plans and assigns Fank the task of finding and bringing Max back, confessing that he is afraid of him. At the same time, Max and Gaius are dispatched to the front, where they reunite with Zeph. Their commander turns out to be the captain of the guard, who refuses to hand over the Earthling to the arriving Fank. The guys are sent into battle on old tanks when Fank finally locates Max. However, Max refuses to leave his friends and stuns the officer, tossing him into their tank. The battle commences, but Max directs his vehicle to the other side of the battlefield. Gaius blindly obeys him, influenced by the radiation, and pulls their unconscious friends out, which the captain witnesses. Gaius offers his body as a shield when the captain prepares to execute Max for desertion, but the wounded Max gathers his last strength and kills the commander. Max mourns his friend but, upon hearing Rada's name from the now-conscious Fank, agrees to cooperate with the Wanderer. After the battle ends Max buries Gaius while listening to Fank's proposals. He will have an apartment on the Institute's premises, his car, and freedom of movement. But he will only see Rada once he proves his loyalty to the state. Meanwhile, the prosecutor heads to the Wanderer's department, where he deceitfully meets with Max. He proposes that Max overthrow the Unknown Fathers by providing the coordinates of the center that controls the tower system. Upon infiltrating the center, Max must activate special radiation, causing waves of depression, which will subdue all the people in the country, including the military. Then, Max must eliminate the Unknown Fathers. Afterward, he will become the ruler of the state and free Rada, who is in the Wanderer's hands. The prosecutor will serve as his advisor. Max takes Zeph with him and embarks on the mission. He arrives at the center and issues orders to his associates, instructing them to detonate the bomb in the trunk if he does not return. He easily gains access to the interior but is halted by guards just before reaching the elevator. Max incapacitates them, but the men regain consciousness and pursue him. Max reaches the control center and activates the depression mode throughout the country. The Wanderer watches as people fall to the ground and rushes toward the control center. Meanwhile, Max returns to retrieve the bomb, places it inside the building, and triggers it. Then, he leaves the site of the impending explosion. The Wanderer initiates a pursuit of Max and, catching up with him, engages in a confrontation. At that moment, a powerful explosion resounds, destroying the main transmitter. People on the streets begin to regain their senses in sobriety as Max rushes to find Rada and locates her in a cryo chamber. He carries the girl outside but the Wanderer blocks his path. It is then revealed that he is, in fact, an employee of galactic security from Earth, who arrived on the planet 20 years ago to assist it. Now, chaos erupts on the streets, leading to a power struggle in which many people will perish. In his rage, the Wanderer beats up a foolish student who destroyed the fruits of his labor. Forgetting about economics and inflation, the state faces famine and invasion from neighboring countries. Max starts to resist and, in turn, accuses the Wanderer of allowing the construction of the towers and the enslavement of the local population. However, the Wanderer reminds him of the laws of history, where all rational beings go through the experience of wars and enslavement. This planet is no exception. It is at this point that Max declares that he is now home. As long as he is alive, he will fight against inflation, hunger, and wars, and will not allow the establishment of yet another society based on slavery. Retta comes to Max and, as they stand together, the Wanderer smiles.